in the second part of the in the second part of this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use Figtree to visualize the phylogenetic trees that we just created so let's go and find Figtree on Google let's click on this link and file download the DMG file let's go to the downloads folder this is the file this is the file that you should open click on open and it should open the application Figtree is right here next thing we're gonna do is we can close the download step and go back to our original file let's rename this file ending with T tree file to TRE say use TRE if it does not show up with the fig tree, uh, fig tree symbol already then you can go open with other and find fig tree over here it's already default for me let's double click on it so we can open on fig tree all right now we open the tree let's take a look at a couple of options we have First, start with the cartoon. If you click on a node and click on cartoon, it's going to turn it into a triangle, which is not very useful. Collapse can be useful sometimes if you want to get rid of some of the nodes. Again, we're not going to use this. Reroute is going to be one of the, the, the options that we're going to use all the time. So, for example, if you have an out group, in this case, we have this Bavai sub 2 clavis which is an out group you can click on it and it already looks pretty good rotate is something that we're gonna use all the time as well so right now we have these samples ending with 11 and 12 at the bottom and all of them all of the rest are at the top if we click on rotate it's gonna bring the 11 and 12 to the top and rest to the bottom let's click on rotate again and let's keep it like this coloring and highlighting you can use those but I will show you another method which is gonna make things a lot easier annotate is something that we're gonna use as well to use annotate click on taxa click on one of the names that you want to change let's change the second one click on annotate and I am going to type in Bavaya Gaitena CAS 205-850 which is a full name now it already looks a lot better and you can keep doing this zoom is something you can use expansion we don't really use that fisheye it's not really common to see root length we use this all the time curvature not really align tip labels I use this all the time so when people look at my tree they can actually see which one is which and especially after coloring the backgrounds it's gonna be a lot easier to follow what's going on after that we're not gonna do anything with the current tree appearance let's increase the line weight to two or three it's up to you I'm gonna keep it at two we don't have anything for time scale because we don't really have any species or any fossils to create a reference Tip shapes, we're not really interested. Tip labels, you have to keep that checked all the time. Node labels. Now, this is where we show our bootstrap values, either with node labels or with branch labels. But when you click on it, as you can see, it doesn't give you the bootstrap values that you're used to see, like 80, 70, 85, or 100. It shows you this weird number. To change that, click on the display and change it to label. Now, it gives you the numbers that you are familiar. Let's repeat the process for branch labels again. And at that point, it's up to you if you want to keep using node labels or branch labels. I like to use branch labels a little bit more. So, for example, 92 stands for here. Node shapes, we don't use that. Node bars, we don't really use that node labels again I showed it to you scale bar you should be using that scale axis again you need to have a reference to use this tip labels let's increase the size of these 
and that's already looking a lot better. Now, at this point, as you can see, we are having a little bit of problem. These numbers all, are all together and it doesn't really look clear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna save two files, one with bootstrap values and one without bootstrap values. So let's save them with the bootstrap values first. Let's go on export PDF. The reason why we use PDF is because PDF keeps the resolution very high. So let's go trial 1.1.2 with BB. And let's save it again without BB. Trial 1.1.2 without BB. Now we can save this and close this. As you can see, now we have two files. That's what I was talking about. The resolution stays really high. And one with bootstrap values. We're going to use this. Let's open PowerPoint. Let's create a blank presentation. Now open the, the PDF without the bootstrap values. Copy this page by pressing Command and C and go on PowerPoint and paste it. Now, this is where we are gonna start putting the bootstrap values. For example, let's close this and open the one with the bootstrap values. 92 will go right here. Now I have the flexibility to put this number 92 in anywhere I want well, to anywhere I want I can play with it I can put it down I can put it to the right side I can put it to the left side above or below now it's up to you and I can change the font size very easily that's why I like to use PowerPoint for this. And you can keep doing this until you're satisfied with the results. Also, let's create, let's create some highlights. Let's assume this is our subgroup two. Let's shape the format, shape the, let's fill it. Let's format the pane to increase transparency to 60%. 60% is a good number. And then let's put another text box right here and say subgroup 2. Also, you have more options on PowerPoint to put little fancy things like stars or arrows, which can be really useful. In the end, you can create phylogenetic trees that are going to look like this. The resolution is really high. I have some stars. I highlighted them. I have my bootstrap values. Everything looks very publishable. And that is how you use the fig tree.